In the previous video, I introduced the concept of a four vector, and today we're going to uh, investigate some properties of the four vector, like uh, what its scalar product looks like. And then using the four vector, we're going to build some other vectors, like four momentum, four forces, and we're going to see what kinds of properties those quantities have, and we have to think about them in terms of special relativity. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the scalar product. And another word for that is the dot product. And so in normal three-dimensional coordinate systems, we've got maybe a vector A that has X, Y, and Z components. And if you did the dot product of the vector A with itself, then you would get something that looks like this. In, with respect to our four vectors, so now A, as it's still X, Y, Z spatial components, but now it has this extra CT term. If we do a scalar product or a dot product, or sometimes this is called an inner product, now it will be similar to what we see in 3D space. So the spatial components still look the same. But now there's a minus sign on our fourth component that was related to the time. So this negative sign is really important. And the reasons for this negative sign are a little bit beyond the scope of this class. Um, but this negative sign comes down to there being a particular metric for space-time. And the kind of space-time we're going to be talking about is flat space-time or Minkowski space-time. And so this metric is just a, a matrix that you'll multiply your vectors by when you want to multiply them together. And uh, But that, if we wanted to cover that in full detail, we would need some more uh, linear algebra, which is not something that is required for this class. So any discussion on that would have to wait until uh, more advanced class, maybe focusing only on relativity. OK, so we now have this definition for the dot product with our four vectors. And so we're going to see now what happens if we take two vectors that are different. And I'm going to put a subscript 1 on the A just so we know which one it goes with. And then I'll put a two on the Bs. And now if we just did this dot product, we would have x1, x2, plus y1, y2, plus c1, z2, minus c squared, t1, t2. OK, so that's pretty straightforward so far. But now what happens if I boost a and b along the x-axis? 
so that A and B are going to go to A prime and B prime, where the primed coordinate system is moving at speed v with respect to the unprimed coordinate system. Okay, so we saw what boosts look like in our previous lecture. So if we're boosting in the x direction, then we might get something that looks like this. So our x prime coordinate would look like this with respect to the unprimed coordinate. X and T. Then our time coordinate in the primed frame would look like this. And then our Y and Z, since there was no boost in those directions, just stay the same. So this is what we had in our previous uh, lecture. So now we're going to do A prime dotted into B prime. So A prime is going to be X prime, Y, and I'll put ones on the A's again, just so we can keep everything straight. But now that we're in the primed frame, everything is getting a prime on top as well. And then we're going to, so I guess we'll write it in the primed coordinates first, and then we'll apply this boost that we defined above. So in the primed coordinates, this is just x1 prime, x2 prime, plus y1 prime, y2 prime, plus c1 prime, c2 prime, minus c squared, t1 prime, t2 prime. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in these relationships here. So we have x1 prime is gamma x minus, and then we'll put the one subscript where we need to, beta c t1 times gamma x2 minus gamma beta c t2. Now the y's don't change when we go between primed and unprimed. So we could just write this as y1, y2, and same for the z, z1, z2. So now we're replacing c squared t1 prime and t2 prime, uh, but our boost is in terms of ct prime. So well, the c, one c of the c squared will go with t1, and one c of the c squared will go with t2 prime. So the first one would give us gamma ct minus beta gamma x, 
And then the second one would give us, oh, and then this should be one and one, and then gamma CT2 minus beta gamma X2. Okay. So now we're going to FOIL out these two things that are multiplied together. First, I'll factor out a gamma from the first term. And then we have x1 times x2, x1 times negative beta ct2, Then we've got the negative beta CT1 times the X2. And then the last term multiplied together will give us a positive beta squared C squared T1 T2. The Y1, Y2 and z1, z2 stay the same. And then we'll foil out the last term. Again, we can factor out a gamma, and I'll just factor it out as negative. Oh, well, maybe I'll leave it as positive for now. So then we have CT1 times CT2, so that's C squared T1, T2. Then CT1 times negative beta X2. have another negative term with C beta X1, T2. And then the last term squared would just be beta squared X1, X2. Okay. So now if we look at our terms, we have an X1, X2 in both the first and the last term. We have a T1, T2 in both terms. And then we also have the cross term. So we have X1, T2, X1, T2, and then T1, X2, X2, T1 up there. So now we can group all of those things together. So both of these terms have a gamma in them. So let's factor out a gamma from everything. Then we have x1, x2, and then minus a beta squared x1, x2. Then we'll do the T1, T2, so there we have a beta squared, C squared, T1, T2, minus C squared, T1, T2. Then the cross terms. negative x1 beta ct2 minus c beta t1 x2. And the other cross term, we have negative x2 beta ct1 
minus C T one gamma X two. Okay, and then of course we still have our Y one, Y two plus C one, C two. Okay, so from this first term, we can factor out the x1, x2, and we're left with 1 minus beta squared. From the next term, we can factor out our t1, t2, and we've got, I guess we can also factor out a c squared. So then we have beta squared minus one. Our cross terms, we can factor out x. Oh, did I group the wrong ones together here? This one should be T two X one. So they have a X one T two in both of them. And what's left inside is beta C. Minus beta c, and we'll get the same thing for the other cross term. And then, of course, there's the y1, y2, c1, z2, and because we have beta C minus beta C, those are just gonna go away. So now there's no more cross terms left. And so when I rewrite this on the next page, so we started this process off at A prime times B prime, and now we've gotten it all the way down to something that looks like this, X1, X2, one minus beta squared, plus T1, T2, C squared, beta squared minus one. And then we have plus Y1, Y2, plus Z1, Z2. Okay, so let's look at what this one minus beta term is. So beta we defined as V over C. So beta squared is V squared over C squared. And so this, if we also remember what gamma is, gamma is one over square root of one minus B squared over C squared. So earlier we should have factored out a gamma squared from everything. And that's going to allow us now to cancel out our one over one minus B squared over C squared with now the one minus B squared over C squared on the top in both of these um, terms. The B squared minus one is just gonna be uh, bringing a negative sign out in front here, and this would be 
one minus b squared over c squared plus y one y two plus c one c two and so all of those things cancel out and so a prime dot b prime was just x1, x2, plus y1, y2, plus z1, z2. Minus c squared t1, t2. And if we remember our what we wrote down initially for what a dot b is, you'll see that these are the same thing. And so all this work is showing us that if we boost our coordinate system, then the length of the inner product is the same. So this is called a Lorentz invariant. And so if I do the dot product of two vectors, then it doesn't matter what I, how I boost the, that coordinate system, the dot product of two vectors boosted or unboosted will be the same. And so this is gonna be a pretty powerful tool, mainly because when we start defining some vectors that you'll see in a second, the, There will be ways to pick coordinate systems where calculating a dot b will be easier than others. And if you can calculate it in one coordinate system, since it's invariant, it will be the same in any other boosted coordinate system. 